My entitled aunt steals my computer and gives it to her kid, claiming that they were only borrowing it for a little bit. But I was so angry that I simply was not going to take that sitting down. So I called the cops and I pressed charges. Here's what happened. My entitled cousin has never been into computers and doesn't really have any hobbies, but he will always try to one-up everybody as well as my family. And to be honest, we're all getting sick of it. For instance, a few years ago, I had saved up for almost two years every penny and dime I had to buy a computer, which at the time was really, really good. I had not told anyone about it besides some friends from school, but somehow my cousin found out, and just a few days later, he had bought an Xbox One and had told the entire family, which of course I don't have a problem with. But then a few hours later, after he bought it, I was in my room on my PC, and he stormed in with a grin on his face and looked at me and said, I got an Xbox now. I knew what was about to happen, so I calmly said, I know, without even looking at him. Because I ignored him, I could tell that he was mad. He put his hands on my desk and said, It's so much stronger than your computer. Which it is definitely not. He had only bought an Xbox because he was jealous of my computer. Therefore, he doesn't even know how to use it. With this information, I said, You can't even watch YouTube on it. And left a small little chuckle at the end for good measure. Of course you can watch YouTube, but he obviously doesn't know that. He then stormed out of my room and looked like he was about to cry. Then, this part is what really made my blood boil. I live in a small city, and a few of my friends live on the opposite side of the city, so it's about a three-hour drive from where I live. So after a long week of school, I decided to visit my friends. When I arrived, I was really tired and ended up staying late and accidentally falling asleep. Eventually, I had woken up early and realized what had happened, so I gathered my things and I left. After a long journey, I had come home and jumped into my bed. After another short power nap, I had woken up and realized that my computer was missing. At first, I had thought someone had stolen it because in my bedroom I have a long sliding door which is always open in the day and locked right before I go to bed. Before I panicked any further I calmed myself down and I went through the steps mentally of figuring out what I should do next. The first thing that came to my mind was to phone my mom and ask her if anything had happened. When I told her my situation she was livid. She was as anxious as I was and after she calmed down she phoned most of our family members who lived in the area one of them being my entitled aunt. After a few days of looking, I was hopeless. I went to the police station and I filed a report. Fast forward to a few months later and I was at my cousin's birthday party and he had his party at his house and my aunt had asked my mom to come early to help set up some decorations. Once we arrived, my aunt offered us a drink and took us to the kitchen, which is right next to her TV room. When I turned around the corner, I was livid. There, sitting right in front of me, was my computer sitting on a foot-long table sideways and the same cousin from earlier was using it. I started screaming at the top of my voice, what are you doing? I rushed over to my cousin, unplugged my computer, and looked at my aunt and said, why do you have my computer? She then says to me, oh, we're just borrowing it. And after asking for clarification on what she meant by that, I turned to my cousin and said, if your Xbox is better, why did you steal my computer? And I said this in a loud, angry voice. At this point, he ran out of the room while he cried his eyes out. I picked up my computer and stormed to my mom's car. I put it in the trunk and picked up my phone and immediately called the police. I explained my situation and how my computer had been missing for months and that I found it at my aunt and cousin's house. All the while, my aunt and my mom come running out screaming at me. What do you think you're doing? Is all they could really ask me. I responded with, what do you think I'm doing? And at this point, she went silent. A few minutes later, the cops arrived and I explained my situation. And thankfully, the cop was understanding. And after asking if I wanted to press charges, I said that I did. My entitled aunt ended up with a week in jail and a $250 fine, as well as 200 hours of community service. Many of my family members, including my mom, have been messaging me saying that I'm in the wrong. So what do you think? Am I the jerk for this situation? You are not the jerk in that situation, and I can only imagine how frustrating that must have been. These people stole your property. I would be super upset if someone did that to me. There would be no excusing that. Especially my computer. Computers can be expensive, and they're not easy to replace. I've always been of the opinion that if you want to play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes. And the aunt got exactly what she deserved. So maybe next time she'll think before she tries to steal. This story came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. If you'd like to submit your own stories, check the links in the description. We would love to hear about your experiences. My boyfriend has been living with me rent free and makes about 10 times the amount that I do. And I don't know how to bring this up or how to approach this topic of him paying rent at all. My boyfriend and I have been together for about 
a year. We're both just entering our 30s, and he just started residency, making about two times as much money as I do, with the promise of making much, much more in the future. When we started living together, it sort of just happened. When his living situation fell through, I offered to be the one to pay rent, since we were planning for the future and talking about getting married. And I told him I know he's going to have to pull the wagon financially a lot then, because he would be making about 10 times the amount that I would. So I'd be happy to do it for now. It was a brief conversation, but he agreed. We do split all other bills, including groceries, and he offers to pay when we go out for meals, but I'm basically living paycheck to paycheck. We talk very openly about our financial situations, so he does know about this aspect of my life. However, I'm now starting to feel a growing resentment that he hasn't offered to split the rent, which would be about $500 each. I know I sort of did this to myself with my offer to have him stay here without rent, but I want to be open and ask him about this once again. I just don't want him to feel trapped to do it or misled somehow. The $500 also may actually allow me to save for once and not have to be extremely stringent, and this money would not put a dent on his pocket in the slightest. I guess I'm just worried about how this would be perceived if I did start asking him to suddenly start paying rent. Does anyone have any ideas on how I should handle this situation? Should I give it a year to honor my offer and then start asking to split it? What should I do? I don't think there's anything wrong with approaching this topic with someone who you're obviously open about with this kind of stuff anyways. Like you can just blatantly tell them, hey, my situation changed and you need to reconsider your financial arrangements. I genuinely don't think there's anything wrong with asking. It sounds like this guy is absolutely on your side and he's very open and available and it sounds like he's going to help if he can. So I don't think there's going to be any kind of conflict in you approaching this topic again. And yeah, you're right. It definitely seems like you're going back on your word. But I think if you consider your financial situation, it will be easy to see that, yeah, you need help with rent. So I think if you're just honest with him and you lay it all out there and tell him the nitty gritty details about your paycheck at the moment, I'm sure he would be more than willing to help out with rent and step up and actually help you pay for rent. My ex-girlfriend is acting very weird, especially after we've tried to make things work multiple times. And I just don't know if she's using me or not. So I started dating this girl like five months ago. We started talking, but she didn't seem to be that interested in me. For example, whenever I wrote her, she always replied to me like two to three hours later. I started talking to her friends to make sure that she was still interested in me, and they all gave me a yes. She is 100% still interested. Anyway, times go by, and after a month of seeing each other, we kissed. And we just kissed. We didn't stop dating. We still were together at least two to three times a week, and when we were together in real life, she always looked happy and wanted to stay with me. Then, when we were texting, she looked just so uninterested. One day, she told me that she wanted me to meet her dad. And that was weird, but that made me think that she was looking for a serious relationship. After three weeks since that kiss, she left me. She didn't even tell me why. No reason, just straight up left. Of course, I wasn't going to go and beg her to stay with me, so I started to go out with friends and getting to know other people. And while I didn't meet other girls, I did just chill around with my buddies. I eventually met her friends, and they told me she feels guilty for leaving me like that, and that she wants to start a relationship with me again. A week ago, we met up again. She comes to me and says that she's sorry for what she's done to me. She knows that she broke my heart. And that same night, we kissed again, and we were together the whole night, talking and acting like we were a couple again. She wrote me that same night, and said that she was too tired to talk, and she was going to write me the next day. That was a week ago. She did not write me back, and there's no way I'm going to write her. I don't want to act like I'm a love addict, but I am still in love with her just a little bit. But after this behavior, I started to think that she might just be using me. But why would she do that? I'm not rich and I'm not that handsome. She doesn't look or act like the kind of girl that uses men. And I'm her first boyfriend too. This is all so very confusing and I just don't know what to do. I can definitely understand where the original poster is coming from, where they feel like this girl is just using him. I mean, to go from kissing and making up and trying to be like, oh, I'm so sorry for acting like this, only to then disappear and start ghosting him again is really, really toxic in my opinion. And this kind of behavior simply will not make for a good relationship. There is a possibility that she's playing some form of hard to get and that she wants you to chase after her and beg for her attention. But that's really, really weird in my opinion. And I personally see that as coming off as really needy. So if that is the case and she's just trying to play games, then I think in my honest opinion, I would take her not responding to your text message as well as not following through on messaging you back as a sign that you should just move on and find somebody else. This type of insecurity and this lack of commitment is not going to be healthy and you will literally just be chasing after a ghost. And I think you can do so much better than that. My fiance is never 
never happy with work, despite going through multiple career changes. And at this point, I don't know what to do. My fiance and I have been together for about five years now, and we've been living together for four, and we've been engaged for about one year altogether. When we first met, he had just completed a Peace Corps type of job that kept him in our state, but working out in nature, in places like state parks and trails, stuff along those lines. He was incredibly charming, charismatic, and confident. He was someone who was always in a good mood. He was friendly and ready for anything. Throughout the course of our relationship, he has had a few career changes. His first job had a terrible schedule, from 4 a.m. to 2 p.m., and he was tired and miserable, so I supported him in his job search. He eventually found a job that he stuck with for about three years. He was progressing well and making good money. Despite this, he would come home and vent to me about how much he hated it for the hours at the time. No exaggeration, he would come home at 6 o'clock at night and ruminate until he went to bed at 10 o'clock. I tried to be supportive, as well as suggesting that maybe he could see a therapist, as well as maybe switching jobs. He took my advice about switching careers, and so he got a job in trades, with great benefits, great pay, and good hours. It's been about a year since he switched over to this trade job, and he is starting his old pattern again, coming home, venting to me, letting his hatred for the job dominate his thoughts and feelings. At this point, I realize it's probably not the job that he hates, but just the cyclical pattern of negative behavior. And now, I literally do not know what else I can do for him. I try to listen, but I can't listen to his talk about how much he hates his job for four to five hours a day. We don't do anything else. He declines ideas for date nights, getting out of the house, and just wants to sit around and be miserable. It's impacting my mental health at this point, and I have tried to put boundaries in place for it to stop, but he won't do it. He refuses to see a therapist or talk to a doctor about it, and I am really just at a loss of what to do for him. Some additional points? For starters, we are both financially independent, so it's not a money thing. Also, he is still the same happy-go-lucky person with his friends. I feel cheated out of the person I thought he was when we first got together. They see the best of him, and I get this miserable lump on the couch who is constantly complaining. To make things even more complicated, we're in the middle of closing on a house, and he has to stick to this job until we close, but he's saying he doesn't know if he can make it through the next month. What should I do? It sounds like he definitely needs to get his life straightened out, and until that gets figured out to some degree, I would not look to buy that house yet. I can completely understand where you don't feel like you have any place in the world and your job doesn't satisfy you 100%. I don't know of any job that will do that though, so he's got to find better ways to cope with his negative feelings and thoughts instead of just venting to you and making your life miserable. Unfortunately, it sounds like the original poster has become his default emotional dumping ground. He vents all of his toxic garbage onto this person and then enjoys himself talking to his friends. And this is just really unhealthy for you. So he really needs to find healthy coping mechanisms. And that does not mean that it's got to be you. So finding a therapist or something along those lines really would do him some good. I think also setting some clear boundaries and making those boundaries known would really do him some good. All you can do is try because otherwise this is just going to be miserable for both of you. And you most definitely do not deserve to be treated that way. My roommate embarrassed me about my sensitive health issues and I'm not sure how to react or what to do. Here's some background. About two years ago, I started to develop a neurological problem with my bladder. Nothing serious, but very embarrassing to deal with, especially on a daily basis. And it took me a long time to regain my confidence in public. Basically, my brain sends wrong signals to my bladder and I often don't have enough time to rush to the bathroom once I feel the urge to go to the bathroom, if that makes sense. I am followed by several specialists, and I take treatments for this, but currently I cannot leave my home without risking a loss of control. My only solution for the moment, even though I hate it, is to wear diapers. I don't talk to anyone about it. It makes me extremely paranoid in public, and I can't dress the way I want to. In short, it's just awful to deal with. I finally regained some confidence, and for a few months now, I have been able to have a social life once again, especially through my friend Sarah. This is not her real name. We met during my studies. We got along last year, and we finally decided to take an apartment together for our last year at the university. We've been living together for six months now, and she's the only person, apart from my parents, I've ended up telling about my problem out of convenience, so that I don't spend my life stressing about her noticing something. About two months ago, our relationship cooled down, which all stemmed back to the fact that I couldn't go to a party last second that she wanted me to go to. She blamed me, and since then, I have the impression that she tends to torment me in a rather sadistic way in connection with what I confided to her. Here are some examples of what she'll do. Sometimes when we're in a break during our class, she tells 
me while in a conversation with two other students that she is going to the bathroom. Then she asked me if I'm coming too, before taking a falsely embarrassed look and then saying that she's sorry and that she forgot in a very non-discreet way. It made me very uncomfortable in front of two other people that don't know what she's trying to do. Overall though, I think I've learned to mask my panic when my symptoms come up, but sometimes it's not possible. One day I'm taking the bus home with her and her sister and I suddenly have an emergency in the middle of traffic. Even though I'm technically protected, realizing that I'm going to lose control is always humiliating for me. So she must have seen my face in that moment and saw that I was stressed or uncomfortable and understood what was happening. And she said to me in a falsely sympathetic tone if I was feeling okay because I looked nervous. She then said in a snide tone, if it's what I think it is, don't worry. No one will be able to see it because, well, you know. Again, the words are compassionate but in her attitude, I felt like she was about to say it in front of her sister that she knows I have to wear diapers. At that moment, I was on the verge of tears. Another time involved when we were shopping. It was just the two of us this time and again, the same scenario starts happening where she says something before looking like she regrets it right after. While we're shopping, we pass in front of a store that sells t-shirts that are kind of short so that they show the bottom of your belly and she looks at them and says, oh, this one would suit you better before taking back that and saying sorry while also saying, oh wait, you couldn't wear that because you're trying to hide, you know. And these are just a few examples that really hurt me. To sum this up, I really have the impression that she is using this illness against me all because I couldn't go to a party last second and that she tries to find every opportunity she can to confront me with my handicap, especially while we're in public. I don't know if I'm paranoid and I don't know how to talk to her about it either. What should I do? This is honestly actually disturbing to me that someone would use this kind of information against somebody all for the sake of trying to humiliate them. This is unbelievably toxic. It's hard to know exactly why someone would do something like this, but I think the punchline here is that you need to find a new roommate and somewhere else to live. This is someone who absolutely cannot be trusted with anything. What a terrible thing to hang over somebody's head. This situation and the problems you have are already embarrassing enough, let alone to have somebody hang it over your head and threaten to expose you over this at every chance they can get. It's disturbing, it's disgusting, and I honestly can't believe someone would seriously act like this. So in my opinion, I would start looking for a new place to live because this abusive behavior for me proves that she is not a good friend. In fact, with everything you've described, she is not a friend at all. She is a straight up bully and you absolutely should not have to ever put up with this. My wife almost cheated on me and I just found out and now I don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Before my wife was even my girlfriend, she was involved with a married man. They didn't go all the way, at least that's what she claims, but came pretty close. Fast forward a year since the above happened and we're in a relationship. She felt guilty for what she had done and she told me, which is all good. It wasn't during my time and it was none of my business. So I frankly forgave her. But the thing is that they had to keep traveling together, not alone, but in a group. In the last trip, when it was almost time to come back, there was a party and she danced with the guy. I know many people may think a dance is not that much, but in this case, it was. At the time, we were boyfriend and girlfriend, but not engaged yet. She eventually told me about this. She did because she realized that if she didn't, other people in the same traveling group would have told me. We talked about it a few times. Over the years, she gave me a few explanations of why she did, which changed over time. She didn't know anybody at the party and she wanted to enjoy it. She was just dancing and didn't mean anything about it. She wanted to make sure she didn't have feelings for the guy anymore. All these explanations all differing from the other. But the last explanation was particularly troublesome for me. I confronted her asking what would happen if she still had feelings for him. Would she have cheated on me to go with him? She answered that we were only a few months into our relationship and that I wasn't that important. And that absolutely floored me. Anyway, she stopped traveling with that group, lost contact with the guy, and we moved on. Eventually, we got engaged and married. We were good together with ups and downs, but generally overall pretty good. Last week, while browsing my Facebook feed, I found an alert that they had become friends online. As soon as they did, he shared a few pictures of the travel when they got intimate together. It crushed me to see the guy hugging her. We talked and I told her I wasn't comfortable with her being in contact with him and so thankfully she unfriended him. All the story so far is just context. Here's where the juicy part comes in. As soon as we got married, it seemed like a switch flipped on her immediately and spending quality time together became a less frequent thing, if you know what I mean. We were married and we loved each other, but she always had pretext as to why we could not spend 
spend time together. I got frustrated as to why, given that she clearly didn't have any trouble making out with this guy in front of other people that she knew, yet with her lawfully married husband, she wouldn't spend any time with. After three years, I finally linked both things. It's possibly wrong, but I did. She felt about that guy so strongly that she didn't care if other people saw them making out, but she feels so little about me that she doesn't want to be with me more than once a week. I know I shouldn't, but I'm comparing myself to this guy now. I feel so insecure about her feelings towards me that I constantly question why we're even together. I'm about to tell her to leave the house, which by the way is mine. I had it before we got married. If you can think of any reason not to, please, I need to hear it because I honestly don't know what to do. This is definitely a really tricky situation. Obviously, your wife opened up to you and told you about a moment where she did something that she definitely regrets. And from the looks of it, she seems to be doing everything that you're asking in terms of distancing herself from this guy and trying to stay away. And it seems like after three years, you're kind of getting it together and connecting the dots that maybe she didn't care about you the way that you thought she did, which is really unfortunate. This entire marriage and situation definitely sounds like a mess. And I think the two of you really could benefit from having therapy together, some kind of couples counseling or something to work this out, because otherwise this really could cause problems in your relationship. And I just think it would be unwise to make any kind of rash decision without some kind of professional help first to try and mediate. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright free music to use for your next stream.